Welcome to the Life Links Podcast, a Latina podcast for the modern cultura. I'm your host, Consuelo Crosby, Peruana, California native, structural engineer, mother, and your amiga for all things Latina. Here we honor the women who navigate multiple cultures, both aquí and allá, and somewhere in between, providing that safe place for you to speak your truth, celebrate la cultura, and find belonging in this comunidad. Join us every Wednesday on your favorite streaming platform to listen to your new amigas as they share their journeys of lessons learned, barriers they overcome, and the joys of living life with pure authenticity. Encuentras your voice and discover the life meant for you. Hola chicas, soy Consuelo here on this glorious Wednesday after wrapping up the nationally recognized month, but here we're daily recognized Hispanic and Latina heritage. What a brilliant time to recognize and support and celebrate all the Latinas who've taken that leap to become their authentic selves, and now they're thriving in what they love doing. I can't wait to share with you even more amazing mujeres whose work and passion speak to la cultura and are not blending in to that model. Mm-hmm, that model we all got hooked on really early in life that was never built to include us. But no worries, we don't need it. As you can see for season upon season here on the Lifelinks podcast, these ladies are rocking it on their terms, on their passion. Today is typically a pod club episode after our full-length conversations the previous week. But like I mentioned last week, we're doing it a little different today. Now this episode stands alone, but to get to know Yasmin more, you really want to listen to our full conversation from October 11th, episode 111. Yeah, all the 11s, you know that's my number, 1111. And feel her enthusiasm that will fire you up to finish that story that you've always wanted to write. Last week, we were honored to be in conversation with award-winning author Yasmin Ramirez, whose memoir, Andele Prieta, resonates with so many of us and keeps us in awe with her experiences that many of us would not even come close to. I would have liked to have been there, but I'm not sure how I would have handled it day in and day out. As Yasmin shared in her episode, she wrote on the Le Prieta to capture every memory she could of her dear abuelita, Hita, who raised her while her mother worked to sustain the family. It's a beautiful, loving relationship that makes you laugh and cry and want to hug your abuelita, especially while you still can. But even more so, Yasmin reveals the journey of claiming her true identity, a journey that was triggered by the sudden loss of her dear Ita and leading her to her first published book that is now a beacon of inclusion for Las Mujeres who did not have the abuelita lovingly bestowing the endearment Prieta, but instead experienced the harsher side of the word. So today, we're bringing you Yasmin Ramirez, the author, the businesswoman, who's going to give all of you out there that have a story in your head and in your hearts, maybe even in your hands, the tips and lessons she learned along the way to getting published. So this valuable info is for all the writers out there who want to know the deets about having your book up on a shelf. So here she is describing how she moved closer to finding her writer's voice. You came back for your MFA, and this is after doing 10 years out on your own, burned out from school, went into uh, retail, corporate, all the thing. Then, like you said, have this moment, this aha moment of, oh my gosh, I'm just feeding my brain. I'm feeding 
my ego succeed on the American terms. I got to get back to my soul. Um, your Ita passes. When I moved back to El Paso for grad school, I accidentally fell into this perfect incubator for myself because the MFA, which is a master's in fine arts, creative writing program I was in, it was bilingual. So they let in five Spanish speakers. And when I say Spanish, it was uh, people from Colombia, mm. uh, El Salvador, Mexico, Venezuela, and then they let in five English speakers. When I got back, I was, you know, just thrown into that, which was shocking. <laughs> I felt like I'd just been thrown into the deep end. And I remember I looked at my syllabus and it was all in Spanish and I freaked out. Within that incubator, it was fun because then I got to discover or rediscover, I should say, like my Latinidad. And mm -hmm. I was in this very safe space and I didn't have to say things like taquitos and what, you know, <laughs> and so I, I could say flauta. You're well empowered by the time you hit your MFA with a creative writing. Did it blend into what you were learning in this more academic mentality of writing? The transition was difficult for me because I went from, you know, working in this very corporate world and uh, a, a different set of vocabulary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to being in this very academic setting. And my undergrad was not in English or creative writing. My undergrad was in psychology. Well, there was people, you know, fully bike riding, I was still on a tricycle trying to figure out <laughs> until eventually I was able to take off the training wheels. And then I think too, in the middle of that, is I realized that I didn't have to sound like them. I could sound like me. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to sound pretentious. I don't want to make people feel that way. I don't want to sound fancy just to sound fancy because I can say what I need to say in a very simple manner. And I found that I like that better and I feel that people are more engaged with me. Andale Prieta, from my understanding, was written very quickly. I started it and then it was my thesis and then I thought I was ready and I pitched it and then it, it didn't go anywhere and then I paused and then I got hired as a tenure track professor and achieving tenure is very difficult and it's very rigorous. Yeah. So I didn't do a whole lot of writing during that time. So there was definitely pauses and breaks. Let's just like sit in this a moment. Freaking congratulations on earning tenure at the college. That's amazing. That's really a powerful success story right there. Thank you. Yeah, that's huge. So going after her MFA in creative writing was more than for writing the book. Keep your dreams alive. You don't have to get your master's to finish your masterpiece. But it may take a lot of faith and inspiration. Yasmin, though, becoming the tenured professor at El Paso Community College. Wow. Wow, wow. Success upon success for this woman. So here's the lessons that we were talking about, the tips that Yasmin learned as she ventured out to get on the Ley Prieta, published. For Latinas thinking about writing, what was it like for you? Because this is current day. So it's relative to other women who are wanting to be in the mainstream publications. Can you share what it's like? Sometimes it's a little humbling. A friend gave me advice, like, if you look at a book, because I didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. Like, where do I send this book? And then there's some rules that you learn. And I learned them like trial and error. So like the big five presses, like Simon & Schuster, Harpone, etc. Like they don't take pitches from authors. It has to be through an agent. Then I learned through the MFA program that, you know, university presses are more prestigious. But even then, I have to go and look and see if they publish authors of color. Because oh. so many presses don't. Wait, seriously? Yeah, or it's like a tiny, like tiny, they'll publish one book. So there's different presses that are more brown friendly. Mm -hmm. There's some that are bigger, there's some that are smaller. But within that too, you still have to see, like, do we fit? Are we a match? Do you publish bilingual text? Do you publish women? Things like that. And so you kind of have to shop around. And so the advice I was given was, look at who's publishing the books that you're reading. Oh, brilliant. 
Mm -hmm. So look in the cover, who published this? Mm -hmm. And this is how you start to develop a list of presses that you might want to pitch your book to. Then you can go to their website and all of them have guidelines. Some of them will say they don't take manuscripts from unagented writers, things like that. Let's say you do get picked up by a press. How much are you willing to change? Because there's still a revision process. Like right now I'm done with the first draft. Mm -hmm. I will have to go through another editorial process when it gets picked up. How much are you willing to change and give up? So I think you should know that going in, that you are going to have to change some things, but you have to pick and choose. At some point, if you're doing this for a living, it has to become business. So as that's the switch you flip that's like, okay, my baby's done. The end. You can leave the nest. Now it's business. So I don't take it personally when it comes to the editing. Is that on point? As a writer, you develop a thicker skin. You have to because initially, even when you're first drafting, you need people to give you feedback because it makes sense to me because I wrote it and I thought it and I can see it in my head. But if it doesn't translate well to the page, I need someone to point that out. It's called a workshop, right? Where you hand out your piece and people read your work. And even out, and this happens outside of an academic setting where you have like a group of writers who are friends and they read each other's stuff. The editorial process is like negotiating some descriptions. If this isn't really clear, Yasmin, is this necessary? And I would say like, okay, no, it's not. I mean, I like it. It's pretty, but it's not necessary. <laughs> Um, but then I knew like I had a firm, like the Spanish had to stay or yeah. the majority of the Spanish had to stay. And so it, it's negotiating those spaces and you have to be willing to negotiate. So already there, you have to be vulnerable in taking that feedback. And then yes, when it gets to business, it, it is different because then there's two parts. You're the artist and the storyteller. And then there's also how are we going to sell this? How are we going to capitalize? on these stories. And so that part it is a little bit odd, but then I fully understand it. I don't know if it's all of my years in retail, but I knew once the book came out, I had to market my butt off to get as many readers, as many eyes as I could on the book. Had you realized at that point exactly what you had written? Because it is an expose on you and the women in your family. And now you have to market that? Had you thought about that before? No. <laughs> <laughs> I had it. Did you do I that? Had uh -oh. <laughs> I did. Oh. I did. I have I have a funny story. Um like the week before it came out, I had um the press sent me my copies and you open a book and wow. I'd already I didn't I'd done research on social media to see what kind of posts authors were doing and I was doing market research, I guess you could yeah. say, and I knew that I had to open the box and do the unveiling and I did the video. Uh and then I sat down and I was like looking at the book and then I realized like oh, wow, wait, this is going to be out like out there. And I told my husband, like, holy shit, everyone's going to know about my life. And he started laughing and he said, Yasmin, you just thought about this? It's a little late. It's going on the shelves. <laughs> yes. And so then it sunk in. And then I had this like, oh, oh God, moment. But then I was like, well, yeah, okay, it's done. And fabulously done by Yasmin Ramirez, award-winning author of Andele Prieta, giving us the play-by-play -play on the business side of things as a writer. I loved sitting down with Yasmin. It was like old friends coming together over cafecito on the sofa. She has such a beautiful spirit. You can feel the creativity building in her, and yet here she has this whole other analytical side of how to make it happen and get it done, ladies. She stressed the importance of having you published with your stories out there because we have to build our community around us in order to keep our identity strong and authentic. So for all you writers and authors out there, all you beautiful creatives with stories in your hearts, I truly admire your courage to discover your authentic voice and share it with all of us, especially after learning how difficult the process is.
It's such a huge endeavor, but we are grateful for each of you persistently increasing the Latina story in print, just like we do here over the sound waves, to open doors for all our comunidad to see themselves in your stories. And speaking of stories, I have a quick little snip that I think is just an indicator of all our planets aligning when we're talking Latina authors. I received a gift from my daughter a little while ago, a book, whose author, Marie Arana, describes her story of her Peruvian father and her American mother from Wyoming. Now, if you've been listening for a while, and you know my story, you might be chuckling, because I have just the opposite. I have the Peruvian mother and the American father from Wyoming. I feel like Marie has something in common with me, because the title of her book? American Chica. I would love to sit down and chat with her and see if we're just living in alternate universes, but basically have the same life. Because a lot of what she went through is exactly what I went through, with a little twist, but also what all of us go through in feeling torn between two identities, two worlds, and trying to figure out our authentic identity. So go out and support our beautiful Latina authors and writers and feel the love through their stories. Because if we don't support them, we won't have the privilege of reading their published artworks. We won't have the privilege of seeing our stories on the shelves And we are doing a disservice after all the hard work that these mujeres go through to get their stories written and completed and edited and marketed. We can do nothing less than buy them all out. Please share this podcast with your friends and allies and subscribe to your favorite streaming platform like Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And on our website, you can listen for free at lifelinks.com. That's L-N-X-X. I would love to hear from you. Any ideas of who you would love to hear on the podcast, if you have some amigas that you'd like to bring out into the spotlight, or what your thoughts are about the topics we bring up. Reach out to me on Instagram at lifelinks and through our website to keep this comunidad talking our truth. Encuentras your voice. And step into your truth, ladies. Ciao! Really appreciate the time you take to rate and review the podcast. Get the backstory and what you've heard here today and reach out on our website at lifelinks.com. That's L N double X. Because it's about time, it's about us. Stay in the groove on our social media at lifelinks and get ready to make your move, ladies. Viva!